This awesome model city is in the Shenzhen Science Museum. I could have stayed there all day admiring every detail, and I decided to try some cinematic shots using the new Honor V40, which I've been using for over a month now. This is certainly a unique and important phone for Honor, and after using it for over a month, there's quite a bit to discuss. I'm Michael, and this is my review of the new Honor V40. This is a little bit of a special moment for Honor. It's their first phone to be released after being sold by Huawei, and therefore is technically free from the US ban on what software can be installed on their phones, which is a really big deal. And as well as that, the V40 also represents a certain shift for Honor towards a more premium future. So has all that gone smoothly for Honor with the release of the V40? Kind of yes and kind of no. At times I haven't wanted to put this phone down. I've enjoyed it so much being in my hands. And at other times it's just been so frustrating. I've just wanted to crush it, but I can't because the build quality is so good. So does the V40 keep up with those upper mid tier flagship phones? Well, on first impression, yes. When you pick it up for the first time, it feels expensive and well machined. In fact, it feels premium in a way that the OnePlus 8T and the Samsung Fan Edition do not. Gone are the shiny, colorful plastic backs that we're used to seeing from Honor. Well, they had to leave a little bit in. But it looks good. This subtle rainbow strip gives it its own personality. The V40 uses an all-metal design. The color I have is called Titanium Silver. It has a good weight to it, not a lumpy weight, but enough that you can feel that it's been well engineered and put together. The build quality is right up there with the best. It actually reminds me of the Huawei Mate series. Perhaps in part it's borrowed a few design cues, but that's not a bad thing. One slightly odd complaint I have with the design is that I found the volume buttons to be unusually sharp, which is a really odd thing to complain about, but it's true. It kind of hurted my fingers for the first few days. Something Honor fans will not be happy about is the removal of the headphone jack. Ouch. No SD card either. Ouch also. And it only comes with a single firing speaker. Hmm. Oof. It does, however, come with an infrared laser, which has actually been really fun and useful, and it can connect to nearly every device out there. But overall, the design and build of this phone is pushing a solid 9 out of 10. Bloody sharp buttons, though. The display on the V40 is a 6.27 inch curved OLED panel, which was so good upon first viewing, my eyes and brain had a slight disagreement as I hesitated to recognize that it wasn't a full Quad HD display. In fact, it's slightly lower, a kind of in-betweener at 1236p. The display is also 120Hz with a 330Hz touch response rate and is hands down one of the best screens I've ever used on a smartphone. The richness of the color that goes hand in hand with the depth and contrast of that OLED panel makes everyday use look fantastic. Every time I've looked at this screen over the last month, even if it's simply checking the weather, the quality of the screen does not go unnoticed. It's sharp, it's bright, it has good viewing angles, and real full screen content such as games and video really bring out the quality of this panel. And when you touch it, it gets even better. I've used 120 screens before, but this one feels just an edge better, a touch more responsive, and I think that has a lot to do with the 330Hz touch rate, which does make everything feel just a smidge snappier. For all you flat displayers, look away now, because this screen is curved, not just a bit, but all the way down, and in my opinion, it looks gorgeous. The snappy feeling continues with an incredible 66 watt fast charger that will take the V40 from 0 to 100 in just over 30 minutes, which is great if you don't charge your phone overnight. I often started the morning on 30% and would come out the shower to a fully charged phone. The wireless charging is also high at 50 watts, but you would need a high powered pad to make use of it. The battery is 4000 milliamps. Over the last month has got me through a full day fine, but this is definitely not a two day phone. Now I quickly need to pause to point out that the V40 I have is the Chinese version and that means that even though Honor has been sold by Huawei, this phone can still not run any Google apps. But Honor say for any future international releases of any of their devices, 
Google Play services will be available on their phones. So right now this phone is running on as Magic OS on top of Android 10, which is basically Huawei's MUI with a few little tweaks and a facelift. The design of the UI is clean and there are plenty of features and settings for you to play around with. Some of Huawei's AI features have been rebranded and taken by Honor and will hopefully continue to see development in the future. It's just a shame I can't watch any YouTube on this phone. Powering the V40 is not a Kirin chip that Huawei used to provide, nor is it a flagship leading Snapdragon, but a MediaTek 1000 Plus, which is a chip brand that a lot of Android phones are starting to use. And it's been okay. Opening apps is fast and snappy, no problems there, and scrolling on a timeline is smooth and processing large files on Lightroom is also fine. Gaming has also been fine. But I couldn't get any of the high-end games that I would usually play to test out a phone to load on the V40 because of that Google services ban. So PUBG, uh, Call of Duty Mobile, uh, Asphalt 9, none of them would load even with a VPN, taking the SIM card out, doing loads of tricks in the settings, it just wouldn't happen. All of those games are available in the Chinese app store, but you need a Chinese ID and I I don't think I'm Chinese just yet. So I had to make do with Asphalt 8, which is the previous version of Asphalt 9, and also Dead Trigger, not Dead Trigger 2. And the phone whipped through them fine without a hitch, and they did look good, but they're not the latest games, which is unfortunate. But to have a closer inspection, I did run a benchmark test against last year's flagship Snapdragon 875 chip running on a OnePlus 8T, and the V40's MediaTek 1000 Plus did fall behind somewhat. Another thing I noticed was how unusually hot the V40 got when doing anything really intensive such as installing apps or recording video. After 5 minutes it gets uncomfortable in the hand which was one of the many reasons I didn't enjoy filming that model city in the science museum. After a few minutes of filming, the V40 became laggy and unusable, to the point where I had to take a break from filming and try and wait for it to cool down. The screen kept freezing and the video app would skip and glitch which was incredibly frustrating. Which leads me into the cameras and first, the overall video quality on the V40 for me left a lot to be desired. The camera can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second, but the stabilization even at 1080p is very shaky. The opening shots you saw earlier of that model city, I actually added stabilization in post to make it usable, because alone it just wasn't good enough. And I also had problems over the last month with black flashes in brightly lit areas when taking footage, like the phone is struggling to adjust the exposure properly. The quality of the video itself is also not mind-blowing. It's not bad, it's not good either, and it's kind of been the same story for the still photos you get from these cameras. Not bad, but also not good. The V40 comes with a 50 megapixel main lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. Photos from the main camera in good light are fine, just fine. I do feel the colors are ever so slightly dull and boring. I'm not a huge fan of overly saturated photos, but the colors here feel like they are drained of any life. However, turning on the AI system for the camera will boost all camera settings to get a more vibrant image depending on the situation, but that I think is in fact too much. You just can't win with me, can you? The images also look overly sharpened and overly processed, perhaps to make up for the lack of quality, but at least dynamic range is a plus and has actually been really consistent over the course of the month, so perhaps a lot of my complaints can be fixed with future software updates. The dedicated night mode performs well when assisted by artificial light, but when used to take this standard balcony shot that I take with every phone I review, it just fell so short compared to nearly every other phone in its price range. It also takes a really long time to take a nighttime shot compared to those other phones. Could that be down to its processor? Perhaps. 
The 8 megapixel ultra wide in perfect light produces nice shots, but it does have a tendency to sometimes look like a watercolor with overly smooth but then also overly sharpened processing that makes everything look a bit mushy and odd. Shots in the daytime look sometimes blurry, not only around the edges of the frame, which is where most ultra wides fall apart, but also in the middle sometimes. And in different lighting, the processing just fell apart. I'm not even sure what's going on down here. And finally, the 2 megapixel macro is just... It's... Yes. I was disappointed by the overall camera performance on the V40, but as somebody who likes photography, I did take some of the shots and threw them into Lightroom for an edit to show you what you can do with the pictures from this phone. Most people do edit photos before they post online, so these images just show what can be done with a V40 shot combined with editing. Luckily, I live in Shenzhen, which is a really cool place to walk around and take photos. And if you are interested in seeing more phone photography, where I've edited the photos like this, you can come hang out with me on Instagram. I usually post phone photos into my stories, so come check that out. But what's your opinion on the V40? What do you think of it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you have a question, please go ahead and write one and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you did enjoy this video, it would be really awesome if you could subscribe to the channel. That would help me out a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.